Welcome, one and all, as we say hello to Candace Warner and James Hooper. Good evening. Uh, good to see both of you. Great to see you back, Hoops. Uh, Plenty to get person. your teeth into this evening. Over this side, Dave Thornton alongside Ben Dixon. Tony. Hey, Tony. Great to have what, what a great crew we have. To be joined later in the show by Australia's newly minted world aerial ski champion, Danielle Scott. All right, let's get into it. There's nothing like a good old-fashioned cross-code poaching. Rugby Australia has thrown a reported $1.6 million a year at Rooster Star Joseph Swali'i to switch from Rugby League at the end of next season. Is this what he's 19, James Hooper? Is he the Wallabies saviour on the field and in the marketing department? Well, money talks all languages, Tone, and Joseph's been hitting the bum with a rainbow and one power ball. <laughs> it was impossible for him, impossible for him to knock back yep. uh, that type of cash. But the risk is he will be branded a mercenary and it sparked all sorts of cross-code banter between the NRL types and also the elbow patch brigade in rugby union. When, is that unfair, though, to call this kid a mercenary? I mean, all these players are getting paid money. They're all deciding they'll get more money if they go to another club. It goes to another code. Is it really that bad? I, I would have thought the Roosters had room in their salary cap. <laughs> oh, DK, <laughs> no, too early, too early. <laughs> too early um, in proceedings. It does always feel like with these guys and their juniors, they're just jumping from one code to the next. Mm. I can't figure out where they originally started when it's, you know, played with this college, then I'm either, then I get post to these guys. Yep. So We had Israel Folau... Switch coats. Oh, of course, with the went Giants. for the uh, rugby league into AFL, and uh, he was getting nearly double the best player, um, and earned every penny of it. In well, AFL. Well, the interesting <laughs> thing. Yeah, the interesting <laughs> thing. It was about a million dollar a touch. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. You know, the funny backstory to that is uh, Israel Folau's agent at the time is the same agent that has Joseph Suwali acting for him now. So there is a little bit of a. A common thread there. So he'll he go can up. negotiate yeah, look, a big deal. James, it. he'll go after any sport, is what you're saying. He's two million bucks to play lacrosse. Let's go for <laughs> it. We'll get money any which way. Well, sure, he, he can look. He can play rugby league. We know that. He's a great young kid. All the guys at the, at the Roosters still love him and respect him. Uh, he can play rugby. He was at the King's School and was a superstar there. Yeah, he's going to. He'll be 21 when he does go over to the Wallabies. There's going to be some immense pressure on him to perform and. Do you think that he's going to be able to cope with that pressure? Because they're going to expect results straight away. Yeah, he's handled everything that's been thrown his way so far, Candice, but he's only played 27 NRL games. He's 19 years of age. I think that is going to be the big question, is all that outside pressure that comes with the paycheck, if he gets an injury or his form isn't up to where it should be, yep. he's going to leave himself open to all sorts of criticism. And Matty, Johns, um, Matty Rogers was talking on the Matty Johns show on Sunday night and said it is so different going from rugby league when it's um, very tribalism with the different teams to then going jumping to rugby union and not having that, not because it's such a global game. He said he may struggle with that as well. Uh, the Waratahs, maybe. Well, Phil Gould's another one. He, he's never shy of a headline. Uh, had a pretty brutal solution to the issue. Have a listen. Well, he's made his decision. He's made his decision to go to rugby. Go. Go now. Really? Don't okay. let the door hit you on the arse on the way out. See you later. <laughs> that arse has been hit by a rainbow as well as a doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> Been a good collection. Yes. Week, <laughs> yes, absolutely. What do you make of that idea? I understand, I understand where Gus is coming from. I think a lot of people uh, in rugby league would share a, a similar viewpoint, that if you're going to a rival code, and whether you like it or not, there's always going to be a very tribal rivalry between rugby league and rugby union. I can understand why Gus would say that. Will the politics come into it with origin? Uh, well, the New South Wales coaches said that they won't. I think if there's a string of injuries in terms of wingers and they need a good outside back and he's in form, then absolutely he'll be in the mix. So I don't think it does. Under Gus's idea, then, every player who is signed for another club should immediately leave the club. Well, hang on. It's not another club, Tone. It's another code. He's signed with Rugby Union. It's not like he's signed with another NRL club. But he basically has still two years left in his contract, all of this year and all of next year. So I, I don't really agree with Gus's comments. No. I've booked an overseas holiday for December. Should I go now? <laughs> <laughs> no, Depends how the show plays out. <laughs> <there. laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, Swali is uh, teammate Brandon Smith from the Roosters. He weighed in, obviously, as he likes to do, having a crack at the game of rugby and at the Wallabies. Yeah, like P Peter Volandi said, go over, get that easy money, and then come back to the real sport. $1.6 million winger from the Roosters isn't going to help you beat the All Blacks. There's a lot of truth in that. 
There is a lot of truth in that. I mean, when Wendell Saylor was there, when Matty Rogers went to the Wallabies, they, ha they had Georgie Grieg and they had playmakers. The Wallabies were a force in world rugby. It is going to be tough from a, a wide-out position for Joseph Swali, no matter how good he is, to have an impact on field. Well, if you look back to when those players you just mentioned made the switch, Steve Larkham yeah. was the fly half. The Wallabies were an absolute force. They'd won World Cups. Uh, they were in the World Cup final the year that we hosted it in Australia. And it's a different time now. The game has essentially been really struggling for the last 10 seasons. And so there is a big risk factor involved, I think, for Joseph. Joseph wasn't born the last time Australia won the Bledisloe Cup. That's a sad stat. Peter Vlandis, is, though, he's very quick to react. Just in case other players uh, are flirting with crossing codes, he's brought back some of the things that rugby has to offer, uh, like the contested scrum, which we saw at the weekend. This is terrific. Look, one against the feet. Outstanding. One, that, that there was amazing. another one of those in the South Manly game, yeah. but unfortunately the referee pulled it up. But, look, it does still occasionally occur, Tone, and as you can hear from that cheer from the Melbourne crowd, they loved it. <laughs> that's, that's entertainment right, right there.